The Teen Titans are a superhero team that are basically the Justice League for teenagers, who are mostly the sidekicks to the full-time Justice League members. In Injustice, the members of Teen Titans are Superboy, Beast Boy, Kid Flash, Wonder Girl, Starfire and the Tim Drake Robin. Dick Grayson was also a member, but he has left and is now a previous member, and it's hinted in the first Injustice video game that Cyborg was also a member. The boss is being generous. I wouldn't be. Most of the Titans died in Metropolis five years ago. I had nothing to do with that. Doesn't matter. You're still on the wrong side of the law. Raven is usually a member of the Teen Titans in most of their versions, though it's not stated whether or not she is or was a member. But we'll assume that she was. So first of all we have Dick Grayson, who died at the Battle of Arkham. For the full details, see my video on how he died, a uh, link to it is in this video's description. And as for Raven and Cyborg, they both ended up fighting on Superman's side and the regime. Cyborg ended up in prison, though escaped in the second game and his fate in the series has yet to be revealed, though it is possible he's back in prison, but he most likely escaped or was pardoned for what he did in the regime for helping to defeat Brainiac, because without Cyborg, defeating Brainiac would have not been possible, as he created the device that disconnected Brainiac from his ship and army. Cyborg, where's that signal disruptor? Coming at you. All you have to do is hit the trigger, but it only jams a local area. You need to get within arm's reach of Brainiac. As for Raven, after the first game, she just disappeared. She was not in prison with the other regime members, but she can travel through dimensions, so she most likely escaped to another dimension, as she has been known to do before. Hopefully in the future, in the Injustice 2 comic book series, we'll actually find out more about what happened to her. As for the rest of the Teen Titans, Superboy, Beast Boy and Kid Flash were heading into Metropolis to get a food order for all of the Titans. When the Joker detonated the nuclear bomb, the three were caught in the blast. Kid Flash died instantly, and though Superboy tried to shield Beast Boy with his body, he couldn't save him and Beast Boy died as well. Superboy of course survived this as he's all but invulnerable, and went back to the other Titans at their home base. The team took the deaths hard, but not as hard as Superboy, who of course saw it first hand and then had to see his hero Superman fall from grace, the man whom he'd based his entire identity on, as Superman killed the Joker and began to turn evil. Superboy couldn't handle seeing his hero turn this way and decided to attack the Fortress of Solitude to talk him down, and if he wouldn't listen to reason, then to take him down. Tim Drake, Wonder Girl and Starfire joined him in this, even though they knew it was a suicide mission. When they got there, they found that Superman just couldn't be reasoned with, and so a fight ensued between Superman and the Titans. But the fight ended almost instantly when Superman mortally wounded Superboy, and there was no way to save his life unless he was put into the Phantom Zone. But Superman would only put Superboy in the Phantom Zone if the rest of the team went with him. They all agreed to this in order to save Superboy's life, and Superman said he would eventually release them from the Phantom Zone when the time was right, but of course, he never did. And so the team is still trapped in the Phantom Zone, which ironically, at the end of Injustice 2, is where Superman is imprisoned. Either Batman doesn't know that the Titans are in the Phantom Zone, so he hasn't released them, or in the Injustice 2 comics they will be released, but were just not in the Injustice 2 video game. Well they were actually in it briefly, if you play the Cyborg Ladder, you get his ending. Brainiac thought he had me all figured out. Said my humanity made me weak. But fighting for humanity gave me the strength to body that punk-ass Kolewin. And before he dropped, I took a few things. His 12th level intellect and his ship's data core. I thought the internet was gigantic. But now, I've got the whole wide universe at my fingertips. First up, I put back every Earth city Brainiac stole, starting with my hometown, the Motor City. Then I keep going. Superman wants to secure one world, but I can reboot tens of thousands. Every last one in Brainiac's collection. Gonna be a long trip, but another benefit of my new 12th level intellect is I can reunite with some old friends. Titans together. Booyah. And that is what happened to the Teen Titans in Injustice. The great thing about the Injustice comic is that it goes into detail on the characters and backstory that the video game just can't fit in. And this story wasn't technically necessary as the Titans aren't in the video game as a group. So this really is just kind of an easter egg to the fans of Teen Titans, which I really like and appreciate the writer doing this. But the question is, will the team ever be released from the Phantom Zone? As I said, the Injustice 2 comics is still coming out and it's possible that they will be released in it. Starfire is also included as DLC on the second game. Since she escaped the Phantom Zone, it's possible others have, 
though it could just be that the video game markers have added her to the DLC package without knowing that in the comics she is trapped in the Phantom Zone. Breakdowns in communication do happen, though we can hold out hope that how she has escaped the Phantom Zone is mentioned in the Injustice 2 comics. But it is important to remember on this that Zass was supposed to kill Alfred in the Injustice comics. However, in the flashback we see in Injustice 2, Robin kills Zass and therefore cannot kill Alfred later on. You didn't raise me. The League of Assassins did. This is a bit of a continuity error, so as much as the comics do match up, mistakes have been made and sometimes they just don't match. Though personally I actually hope they're all still in there, including Starfire, and I hope the DLC is separate to the main story, because it would be great for Superman to meet them all in there and for them all to escape together. After all, they don't know the full extent of what a villain Superman has become. They only saw the beginning, and he could easily lie and say he saw the error of his ways and came to rescue them. And this would be a great plot point in the third game. But what do you think? Do you think they'll ever be released or that they'll just be forgotten and left there forever? Be sure to let us know in the comments. And I'd just like to give a quick thank you to those of you who made this video possible by donating to Needle Mouse Productions page on Patreon. Patreon is a crowdfunding site that is helping us to bring you more videos each week and to raise funds for adapting comic book stories into animated short films. And as always, thanks for watching and feel free to subscribe, share, like and comment.